Hey everybody, Jake here, and today I'm going to show you my ink collection. Um, a few of you asked for this, and I hate every single one of you because this was a massive undertaking. Um, it took me a very, very long time, so I apologize for one, for the length of this video, two, for how long it took to get it out, and three, um, just for the sheer amount of ink that's going to be in here. I had a lot more than I, uh, than I thought I did. So, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm just going to be some jump cutting because I'm going to have to run back and forth just to get the batches of ink. Um, but let's go ahead and start with um, probably my favorite ink brand in terms of just how it performs. And that's uh, Pilot Orochizuku. So, with each of these ink brands, I'm going to show a bottle and then show all the inks that I have and I'll swab. So, this is what the bottles look like. Uh, this is the bottle for Fuyu Shiogun. Um, really, really like these bottles. They have a good sized neck, uh, nice depth to fill from, and it comes down to a point down here. Makes it a little bit easier just to get your, your ink out. We'll set that off there. And these are the inks that I have for it. Um, Pilot Orochizuku Amiiro. This is probably my favorite Orochizuku ink that I have. It's a great, great light blue. It's very vibrant, um, very punchy, but it's still saturated enough to where it's very easily uh, readable. So it works really well on paper, and it performs very, very well in pens. Asagao is... <laughs> when I got this, I thought it was uh, a more purple ink. I purchased it from a stationery store in Japan. Um, it, it does have purple to it, certainly, but it's a lot more of like a, a blue that you'd find in sort of like a big pen or something. Very akin to that color. So if you if you really, really like that color of ink, um, this might be the way to go. It, again, it performs very, very well. And I, I, it's grown on me a little bit. Still not a huge fan. This is actually my most popular video is the review of, of this ink, um, which includes the death of my Pilot Vanishing Point. Kosu Mosu. Um, I really like this ink a lot. It's a it's a light pink, but again, kind of like the Amiiro, it's very uh, readable. When you, when you have it on paper, you can see you have no issue e reading that back. If you have poor, poor eyesight, it might not work super well. But it's just kind of a... It's a lighter pink without being too faint. Um, it's very, very usable. It's th between this and um, Lamy Vibrant Pink. Those two are my go-to pink inks. Next up, we have Momiji, which is a bit more of a... It's kind of like Kosumosu, but more red. Um, it's not strictly a red ink, which um, I'll, I can show you some of those in a moment. Um, but it's it's a very, very nice ink with a good amount of shading. And it even has a little bit of sheen in certain lights. You can kind of catch gold hints. Uh, depending on how much ink you put down. Last one we have here, my wife picked this one out because I, I really don't like gray inks for the most part. Um, this one is Pilot Orochizuku Fuyu Siogun. I have no idea if that's pronounced correctly. That's this bottle here. Um, it's interesting. It has kind of some purple and blue undertones, but as you can tell trying to read it here, it's very, very light. Um, very hard to read on paper. It just isn't pleasant for me. It comes out to like a graphite color, like a lighter graphite. And I, I generally avoid using gray inks, especially that one there. Next up, we have Noodlers. I have my least used ink here. This is Noodlers Apache Sunset. Um, I hate this ink. You can go watch the review of that if you want some, uh, some fountain pen community drama. Read the comments on that one. This right here, Noodlers Apache Sunset. So, when I looked at this... Especially online, I was convinced it was going to be orange and red and vibrant and a lot of different shading. There's some shading here, but it's next to nothing compared to something like Diamine Autumn Oak, which is a better color in my opinion. And I get Noodlers has some inconsistency, but that's no excuse for, you know, for me to be like, oh, never mind, this ink gets passed. No, I, I paid for this ink just like everyone else did, and I, I don't like it, so... Yep, there it is. It's like a mine's like a yellow gold. Um, it's not really hard to read back, but it's kind of a I don't like the color, so I don't use it. Um, Newler's Lorraine Mauve. This is the only um, bulletproof ink that I have. It's it's a really really deep purple, um, and there's very very little shading to it, like a lot of the bulletproof inks. There is some you can get it a little lighter or a little darker, but it's just it's just a, a solid dark purple ink. Um, if you're looking for something very simplistic that's waterproof and all that stuff, um, this is a good one to check out. My favorite Noodler's ink, um, this is Noodler's Widowmaker. This is a very, very vibrant, bright red. Um, let me compare Momiji real quick here for you. 
And you can kind of see what I meant by Momiji being a little bit more pink. Um, this is like really, really red, red. And I like it a lot. It's, it's really vibrant. It's very, very easy to read back. Um, if you're like a teacher or something, you need to make corrections on papers. This is going to be a really good one for you. And you get a lot of ink in Noodler's bottles. Oh, I, I forgot to talk about the bottle. Sorry. <laughs> a little scatterbrained here. Um, Noodler's ink is not one of my favorites, but the bottles are fantastic. They hold a lot of ink. The necks are very wide, very easy to fill from, and they're pretty cheap. Noodler's Operation Overlord Orange. I do not remember where we got this ink from. I don't know if it's one. I doubt it's one my wife got because she doesn't really like orange. Um, I love orange. I have yet to try this one, so I'll have to. Um, I may have got it in a true Fay box. I, I don't really remember. I'll have to. <laughs> I want to have any videos of some of them. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll have to figure out where I got this ink from. But it's a very simplistic orange. Um, it's It has some shading, but it's, it's mostly just a straight orange if you if you like those noodler's polar blue this is my wife's ink um i really if you notice most of the inks that i have and i've picked out are very vibrant very saturated hers are a bit lighter a bit more faint a bit more muted she likes those um this ink is actually freeze resistant so if you live in antarctica might be an option it's like a really grayish uh light grayish blue uh i'm a struggle pronouncing this one too um noodler's la Couille royale I don't know. It looks French to me. Um, somewhat similar to Osagal, but more purple. Um, a little bit more purple in this, but still, it's kind of that, that blurple-looking color. Um, decent amount of shading in this, actually. Uh, pretty good amount of shading. It's it's a it's a somewhat interesting ink. It's not my favorite, but I don't I don't really hate it. I'm just not a huge fan of that that blurple color in inks. Noodler's Gruen Cactus, also one my wife picked out. Um. Really, really cool green. I actually like this green a lot. There's a ton of shading to it, and it, it performs pretty well. Kind of um, basic green, to be honest. But again, it has, has some shading kind of offset that somewhat generic color, in my opinion. All right. So these two I have the most ink from. This is, well, these two. This It's one brand, Diamine. Um, but there are two bottles. If I have the 30 mil, I'll show you those as well. So this is what a 30 millimeter millimeter 30 milliliter bottle of dye mine ink looks like i'm somewhat narrow neck i'm not a big fan of these bottles however the full size dye mine bottle these 80 mil ones i love these i think they look really really nice dye mine ink's pretty inexpensive pretty wide neck to fill from they're a little squat so when you get down pretty low it's going to be a little difficult to fill but I, overall i really really like these bottles they're really really solid all right, let's get started on these. Um, I, th I think this is the brand I have the most from. Domine Earl Grey. Um, this gray is a bit darker. I, I do use this one occasionally. This is from Reddit's um, Fountain Pens subreddit. They kind of get together, including me, <laughs> and um, picked and named some ink. This is a gray, but with some purple and kind of reddish undertones, which you may be able to pick up right on here. I actually like this gray quite a bit. And it's, uh, it's kind of special to me because uh, I, I was kind of there when it was being formed like in, on the Reddit. I wasn't actually when they were making the ink. Um, Dying Line Magical Forest. This is a shimmer-tastic ink. As you can see, there's a lot of silver glittery bits in this. Um, somewhat similar to the Noodler's Cactus color. A little bit darker, but it has that, that uh, sheen to it. And it still has a pretty good amount of shading, honestly. Um, it, it has some pretty interesting um, colors you can get with it. Not a huge fan of Shimmer inks, but this one's pretty good. Diamond Pumpkin. This is my favorite orange, period. I, I love this ink, um, especially with October coming up. By the way, I will be doing probably a, um, a Halloween-related ink video. So which inks I recommend for Halloween or the month of October or fall in general. And this is going to be one of them. You best believe it. I love this ink. It's a super vibrant, super bright orange, and it's it's just fantastic. Really easy uh, readability back, and it's it's festive. I like it. Not much shading, but it's it's just it's really bright. It is a super super bright ink. Diamond Cerise. Speaking of bright, uh, that's this one here, and pumpkins. This bottle. Um, my cousin got this for me, and I love it. It's almost no shading at all, but it's like neon pink. It's it's fantastic. Um, super super bright. If you were looking for a really really vibrant neon hot pink this is a pretty good choice diamond oxblood i only use this in one pen which is a 
a bit silly, but it matches so well. It's my Diamine 30... Oh, my Diamine. <laughs> it's my Platinum 3776 uh, Century in the, the dark red finish. Um, it matches perfectly with this ink. So I, I keep this ink in that pen at all times. It's the only ink I use with that pen, and this is the only... And that's the only pen that I use with this ink. Um, very tiny bit of shading. There's some sheening down here. It's like gold almost. I have not noticed that in any of my writing. Um, just letting you know that out the, out the front. But it's pretty good ink. This is my favorite shading ink. This is what Noodler's Apache Sunset should have been. This is Diamine Autumn Oak. It has that orange. It has some browns. It has some yellows. And a lot of people... Again, go to Apache Sunset over this, but look, like look at the difference. This is this is nothing compared to Diamond Autumn Oak. This is a an awesome, awesome color. It's my second favorite Diamond ink. Um, it's easily in my top five inks. Period. It's just it's great. I really, really like it. Again, a lot of shading. Um, you can get a ton of color variation. And you get that in the writing too. It's not just when I when I do these uh, dip swap things, but it's it's fantastic. If you're looking for uh, an autumn ink or fall ink this is probably going to be my recommendation to you diamond pink glitz so this as you can tell <laughs> is also a um sh shimmering ink yeah shimmering but this one is it's kind of a pink um again very little shading it's not quite as vibrant as cerise it's a little darker but when you touch it towards the light you get that gold shimmer it looks pretty cool i prefer this over magical forest honestly um, I really, really like this this ink a lot. I don't use it very much because I'm not big on shimmering inks, but this is really cool. Speaking of reds, <laughs> Diamine Wild Strawberry. Super, super vibrant red. Um, similar to Noodler's Widowmaker. Um, I think this has a, a tad bit more shading. Um, it gets a little darker, but it, again, it's a super punchy, super vibrant red. Diamine Jade Green. This is a uh, an interesting ink. Uh, again, one my wife picked out, which is shocking because she normally doesn't go for uh, super bright inks. I kind of like this one, though. Um, it does have a, a little bit of shading, um, enough to where it's it still stays interesting. But just the base color is really, really cool, in my opinion. I'm not a huge fan of yellow-green, but this is this is really, really awesome. Diamine Soft Mint. Um, love this ink really 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 love this ink it's it's fantastic it's a really cool um light blue with some green undertones readability is a little rough on it if you especially if you're using a finer nib um but it it's really really cool it's kind of like the 80s um you know the the paper cup that you would get from like restaurants in the 80s they'd have like the the colored zigzag uh, you might know what i'm talking about it's a very 80s color though i, I like it a lot diamond skull and roses <laughs> This is really, really cool. Um, this is European exclusive ink, but my wife got it for me for uh, Christmas this last year. It's a really cool dark blue, and it has red sheening, and you can see that even in the writing. It comes across really, really well. It's kind of like the um, organic studio inks, but not quite as radical, which I have issues with those, which we'll cover in a bit. But I, I really, really like this. This is a really, really cool ink, and I, I love the, the sheening in it. Last one, Diamine Misty Blue. A bit of a lighter blue, but not too light. Still very legible. I use this occasionally, especially with uh, Twisby Mini AL. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty good match for this. Really, really like this ink, and it can get pretty light. And it does have a tad bit of red sheening as well. However, I don't notice that in any of the writing. All right, next up we have Lamy. Um, this was my first fountain pen ink that I ever tried. Not this bottle. It was actually Lamy Turquoise. Um, but... Oh. I have a fond spot for, for some of Lamy's inks. Um, this is the bottle of Lamy Vibrant Pink. It was the special edition last year. See a little bit of shimmer there. Um, their bottles are weird. They're very utilitarian, though. And recently, I picked up one of the Lamy Crystal inks. Um, these bottles are really, really cool. I like them a lot. And in my opinion, they look a lot better than regular Lamy inks. But let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the Lamy inks that I do have. First up, Vibrant Pink. Um, this is my favorite pink ink that I own um, just because of the color I don't know it, it it's it's really really nice um, it's a bit more muted than some of the other pinks which is normally not the way I go I normally like really vibrant colors as I mentioned but there's something about this and you do get a little bit of gold sheening 
in it. Um, you can kind of see that there when it plays with the light. You got that a little bit in the writing too, especially if you're using a wetter pen. Um, but this is this is a really really cool ink. I almost picked up two bottles of this actually. Um, I didn't, which I, I regret a tad bit. But you may still be able to get that one. I'm not sure. This was my actual first ink, um, Lamy Turquoise. It's just a straightforward Ford turquoise with a little bit of shading. Um, it performs very well, and it's it's very very legible. Pretty simplistic color, but out of Lamy's basic lineup, this is my favorite. And then the Lamy Crystal Amazonite. Um, this is a very interesting ink. Um, it's a it's a greenish blue, as you can see, but it almost has some like yellow in there. It's 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 weird, um, but I, I like it a lot. I haven't got a chance to use it a ton, but I, I look forward to, to trying it some more. Lamy inks are pretty good, and they're they're fairly inexpensive. Those crystal inks aren't quite the same um, price to, to value ratio, but they're not bad. Next up, as I was talking about them earlier, Organic Studio. Um, this is Ernest Hemingway. I hate these inks. I love them, but I hate them. Um, they perform very, very well. They're very, very pretty to write with, um, especially in pens that aren't super wet, so you can kind of get the base color a little bit. But they crystallize, um, and cleaning them out is an absolute nightmare. Um, I really, really dread putting that in any pens, to be honest. I wouldn't be surprised. Yep, it's got an ink on me already. It does that sometimes. Now, all three of these inks are going to look fairly similar. That's because there's so much sheening in here that you can barely see the base color. So first up, Organic Studio Ralph Waldo Emerson Twilight Blue. You can kind of see that it's a blue around the edges, but as you can see from the writing, you're not really going to get that. You're going to get reddish pink sheening, um, especially with a lighter pen. This stuff takes forever to dry. As you can see, it's smeared all the heck. Um, the, it's, it's really pretty to try every now and then, but it, it's, it's not my favorite um, ink by any means. Henry David Thoreau, Walden Pond Blue. Um, they call this blue. This is green. Um, I, I, I don't know why they call this blue. This is a green ink. But, just for comparison, an actual blue. Um, you get kind of an emerald of Chivor uh, color with a little bit more green. And you get, again, that kind of reddish pink sheening. This one uh, has a bit more red in it than the other one does. Um, but again, in the writing, that's, that's basically all you're going to get. You're really not going to get any of that base color. Um, unless you're using a, a drier pen, so just keep that in mind. And there's the back side of it as well. Um, Organic Studio Ernest Hemingway Santiago's Sea Blue. That's this one here. Again, very, very little of the base color. This one is a bit more interesting, though, because it has bluish purple sheening um, with a little bit of red. It's 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 pretty purpley. This is my favorite of the three, um, but it's like an oil slick. <laughs> it's a little excessive. Um, and I forgot to talk about the Lamy bottles. They're pretty easy to fill from. The Lamy Crystal Ink especially has a super, super wide neck, and I'll go over that in the review. Um, but I, I like it a lot. Um, and as far as this bottle goes, these are awesome bottles. I love them um, as far as like the form factor. They're very simplistic. They hold a good amount of ink. They're really easy to fill from. They've got a wide neck. But the, the inks themselves are just not really, uh, for me... Organic Studio does sell some standard inks, but they make their, their kind of bread and butter inks are the uh, the sheening inks. Next up, a, a brand I've messed around with a bit, and I picked um, two bottles up at True Phase Grand Opening in Greenville, South Carolina. If you're in the area, go check them out. Um, this is Robert Oster um, ink. This one is Cherry Blossom, which I have right here, and then we have one more as well. Go ahead and show Cherry Blossom. This is a super light pink. And I mean super light. I do not know how well this would read back. But I think it would be really cool special occasion ink. It's almost flesh colored. <laughs> At least um, if you're if you're pale like I am. Um, it does have a, a good bit of shading though. And I was writing this with a fairly dry pen. If you're using a wetter pen I could see this being a, a very usable ink color. Um, but it's it's light. Just be ready for, for how kind of faded that is. And the other one that I have here, this is Robert Oster Crystal Marine. Um, this is a sheening ink, but it's very, very subtle. I, I like it a lot. I like the base color a lot as well. And you get a little bit of the shimmer in the writing, but it, it's, again, it's very little. It's nothing like the Diamine um, Shimmertastic inks, but it, it's it's subtle, but I, I like it a lot. 
Um, so I'm really looking forward to actually trying both of these inks out a bit more. And the bottle. Um, this could possibly be one of my favorite bottles if they made the neck a little bit wider. It's a little narrow. Um, you might have trouble fitting like really large pins in here. Um, just because how tall it is. be very easy to fill from. All right, next up we have Monteverde. Um, these are their larger bottles. I th believe these are 80 mil. I'm not positive. I think they are. They're pretty big. Um, I really, really like these bottles a lot. They look really, really cool. They're super, super easy to fill from, and they have an extremely, extremely wide neck. Um, the the kind of grooving on the glass makes it very, very easy to open, which you can kind of see there when I lay down those ridges. Um, it's it's just a great, great ink bottle. And I have the 30 mil bottle here as well. I don't like these nearly as much. It's it's kind of like a noodler's bottle that's had the bottom half chopped off. Um, so they fill pretty well. Again, pretty wide neck, which is unique for a lot of these 30 mil inks. A lot of these have uh, thinner necks. Um, so it's it's easy to fill pens from, but I think after you get down to about half, it's going to be difficult to fill from this. Let's go and take a look at the inks that I do have. Monteverde Purple Rain. This is probably my favorite purple ink that I have. Um, I really, really like it. It has a good amount of shading, but it's pretty pretty simplistic. Um, it's it's vibrant. It's, it's just nice. I really like this ink. And you can see the back there. It does have some almost black sheening, which is weird but um, it has it just ever so slightly. Monteverde Capri Blue. Just got this one again from True Freight, True Fay. <laughs> um, from one of their grab bags. My wife asked me to pick up one for her, and it did, and this is the color that she got. Um, it's it's a blue, but it has a little bit of red sheening to it. It's it's pretty, pretty faint, but it's there. Um, it's just kind of a, it's a good straightforward blue, a little bit lighter than some like legal blues or something like that. So it's a pretty good, um, just kind of basic looking blue with a little bit of shading to keep things somewhat interesting. And then we have Diamine, I'm sorry, oh my gosh, <laughs> Monteverde Rose Pink. Um, this is a very, very light pink. Um, even when you write with a with a wetter pen, it's, it's pretty light. Again, this seems more like a special occasion kind of ink, um, but it has some very interesting shading properties that you can achieve, some like bluish purples in there. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool ink, um, it's just a little hard on the on the read back to get a good consistent um, easy to read color next up is another new acquisition uh, this is a bottle of pelican edelstein star ruby um, me and my wife went to the pelican hub this year and they were giving these out as part of their uh, like um, grab bag thing for the event I really, really like this ink. I'm going to show you it here in just a second. Let's talk about the bottle real quick. This is the nicest looking ink bottle I think I've ever had um, as far as just appearances. So if you just set this on a desk, um, it looks expensive. I don't know. It looks nice. Um, there's It's hard to see, but there's kind of grooving to the, to the glass on all sides. It's like contoured. Um, it's, it's really, really cool. As you can tell, there's a lot more glass um, than on some bottles especially down here towards the bottom. So the ink amount isn't huge. I think it's standard 50 mil, um, but it's a very, very cool. I like the, the cap a lot, and the neck is pretty wide. Um, so I think you're only going to run into an issue when you get down towards the bottom half of it. Um, but again, it just looks really, really nice. But these are expensive, so keep that in mind. On to the actual color. Um, this is Pelican Edelstein Star Ruby. It's a, it's a pink but it's a really red pink. Um, you can see again some like gold shading down there, which seems to be pretty consistent across these these pinkish red inks. Um, I like it a lot actually. Um, but it's it's vibrant. It's pretty easy to read. Sorry about the um, the jump there. My camera uh, record time ran out and then started again. So um, again, uh, really really cool like reddish pink ink. I like it a lot. I, I may pick up some more Pelican Edelstein inks in the future. Um, it just really depends on how much I like the color. A lot of them have been pretty basic. It's probably my favorite one so far. Last one in this little batch. This is Gerbon Lidithi. I don't. I can't pronounce French. I'm sorry. Um, I hate this bottle. <laughs> I hate this bottle so much. It has like a little groove here, so you can set your pen. 
Um, but if you have any normal sized fountain pen, which this one's a little bit big, but this is the um, Netuno 1911 Black Sands. I look forward to reviewing this one a lot. It's really, really cool. Anyway, um, if I set this here, it will sit there, but if we pick up the ink, you can see it really doesn't sit in that groove. It leaves a pretty big gap. If you have a, a very thin pen, um, it will sit in here pretty well. But even something as narrow as like the Metropolitan, you're going to have issues because the, the groove itself actually curves. So it needs to be a little bit smaller than this hole to sit well. Um, the neck is an okay width, but the bottle is so shallow that honestly when you get down to the last little bit, you're going to really, really struggle because the neck isn't quite wide enough to tilt or anything like that. And it's just... It's just not very much. I think this is a, um, I want to say 30 mil, 15 mil, something like that. It's not very much ink. Um, this color, I hate it when you write with it, but from the dip test, it looks, it's kind of cool. It's like a coffee brown, um, but actual writing with it, it, it looks like trash. I hate it. <laughs> this is kind of a, um, I walked into a shop and I, I wanted to buy an ink and I hadn't ever seen really any of the inks in Cherry Bond's lineup because I don't use them really because I hate the bottles. Um, but I felt inclined to buy something so I bought this and apart from Apache Sunset, this is one of the ink purchases that I regret. I'm not a big fan of this ink or the bottle to be honest. Um, Cherry Bond's ink bottles, even on the Emerald of Shavor, which I forgot to grab. I'll grab it in a minute. Um, not a big fan of, of the actual utility, utility of the bottle. And of course, I forgot another Jerry Bond ink. Um, this is a scented one, but the same ink bottle as the last one I just showed you. Jerry Bond Encre Rouge. Um, it's a kind of a, a faint red. Um, it's still very legible because red's a, a pretty punchy color. Um, it has a little bit of shading, but it smells like flowers or roses or whatever. Um, this is my wife's ink as well. Uh, I don't really like Jerry Bond inks. They're kind of dry, to be honest. At least um, this line is. They're not super great. Um, the color's nice, though. I like this color a lot better than the other one. Now, on to Emerald of Shavor, which is probably, if I ask most people, uh, probably the most attractive ink bottle in their opinion. Um, I do like it. I think it looks really, really cool. But in terms of practicality, it's garbage. And the reason is the neck is so narrow on this ink. It's ridiculous. Like, um, okay, that, that Netuno pen that I just showed you, this one here. I could not fill this pen from this ink bottle. It's the, the next too narrow. It's it's awful. I hate it. <laughs> I hate using this this ink um, just because of the bottle. To be honest, I really need to use it more. Um, you can kind of see all the all the shimmer down there. But this is a, a really really cool looking bottle. A lot of the sixteen seventy inks are. They have kind of the wax seal um, stamp and the cap and the, the cord wrap around thing. But let's go ahead and take a look at the actual color. This is Gerbon Emerald of Shavor. It is a bluish green. Sorry, it's hard to get these down in the bottle. It's a bluish green um, with a ton of color variation. You have some shimmer. You also have gold, red, and purple sheening. Um, it's a when you use it with a wetter pen and you really shake up the bottle good. It's a really interesting color. I love using it for Christmas cards and stuff like that. Um, cause it's, it's, you know, it's got that red, that gold, that green, it's really Christmassy. Um, I like the ink, honestly, and performance wise, I like it a lot. It's just the bottles, just trash, <laughs> um, which may sound a little harsh, but they're expensive. So I can say whatever I want about them. Um, next up stipula. Um, these ink bottles are really, really good. Um, I don't like the label misalignment, but it's, it's whatever. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this, so it's stipula green. <laughs> um, these are 70 mil, which is a really unique uh, size. Really, really wide neck. Um, really cool looking cat there. And the only problem is the ink. I've not used a ton of this, but it's down to like here. That's kind of hard for you to see, I guess, from the top. It's down to like here. Um, when it comes filled up, it only comes to about here. It's not super, super full. Um, I like this bottle though. It reminds me kind of like of old medicine bottles, not like prescription medicines, but from like pharmacies in the early 1900s and stuff. Kind of that labeling that they use. Reminds me of that a lot. Um, I really, really like this bottle. Like honestly, filling from it and stuff is it's fantastic. And I think it looks pretty good. Again, apart from the label misalignment, which isn't a huge deal. 
The actual color is a little boring. <laughs> um, it's just a green. It's a lighter green. It does have some shading to it, but it's just a, a pretty basic green. If you're looking for, uh, if you're looking for a green, but you don't want to go too crazy and you want a really good utilitarian bottle, you know, it's a pretty good choice. I will say the boxes for these are unnecessarily large, so keep that in mind if you keep your ink boxes. Next up, the first bottled ink that I had. I had Lonnie, Tur Lonnie Turquoise. That was my first actual ink, but I had it in cartridge form initially. This is my first bottled ink um, because just like every fountain pen enthusiast, um, I think I start off, I think everyone pretty much starts off with a black ink at some point, you know. Um, so this is Namiki Black. Dun, dun, dun. It's not as nearly expensive as the pens are. Um, this bottle is awful. This is one of the worst bottles. It's so short. Um, the neck's really, really wide. I do like that. Um, it's very, very easy to fill from. If I can get this ink open, I haven't used it in probably two years. Hold on. Okay, I don't think I can get it open right now. That's fine. We'll work on that later. I'm not going to worry about it. It's going to be okay. <laughs> um, we actually do have two bottles of this. Um, one came with my wife's uh, Namiki Nippon Art um, Origami Rabbit. But really don't like the bottle. Um, it takes up a lot of unnecessary space when they're wide like this as well in storage. Um, you know, But it is black. <laughs> um, it looks almost like a brownish gray in this light. But when you write with it, it, it is a black. Um, it's it, it certainly has some grayish undertones, but it's 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 a pretty solid, just kind of straight black color. Um, not my favorite black that I own, but we don't own very many, so it's not a super uh, tough competition. Next up, another bottle that I really don't like. Um, so one of my pet peeves for inks is a, a really narrow neck to fill from. I hate that. This pretty much eliminates that whole thing because these necks are huge. <laughs> these are Bung Box, there we go, Bung Box inks, um, which use, they're made by Sailor, and they use um, Sailor bottles, which are really short, kind of like the Namiki. I, li I like this more than the Namiki. And they also come with these filling inserts. I removed that from all of them because I hate them. Um, but they're they're interesting. Um, these bottles are, they, they look pretty good. Um, they're not my favorite, but they, they look, they look quintessential, ja quintessential Japanese to me for whatever reason. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the inks that I have from Bung Box. I only have two. I do have three bottles though, uh, cause I have two bottles of one of the inks. First up is Bung Box Ink of Witch, Ink of the Witch. It just says Ink of Witch on the label. Um, so that's why I say that, but this is a, an, an interesting ink. So, when you initially write with it, and for several minutes after, maybe up to an hour or two after, it's black. But after you let it dry a bit, it turns to this really cool dark purple, like a dusty purple, with almost like grayish undertones. It's it's an interesting ink. Um, I wish the transition were more extreme, but I don't know what they would have to do to, to get it to do that. So, for what it is, it's pretty cool. This is Bung Box June Bride. I have two bottles of this ink because the color is damn near perfect. Um, pretty good amount of shading, but just the base color is like my favorite color that you can get ever. <laughs> um, so I do have two bottles of this. They're a little dry, so I don't write with it a ton. Um, this ink in particular is really important to me. Um, me and my wife got married in June. We actually went on our honeymoon to Japan, and um, when I saw this ink, I knew I had to get some of it. So I picked up a bottle of this and a bottle of this. At a later point, I got the Caveco All Sport Bung Box June Bride Edition, and it came with another bottle. So I have two bottles of it, which I'm not going to complain about because I, I really, really like this ink. All right, next up we have um, these are these are kind of cool. I don't know if you can still get these. You, you may be able to. These are Kara's Customs inks. Um, I don't know who made the ink for them. If they made it in house, I'm really not sure to be honest. Um, they released I think a thousand bottles each. They have a gray and a blue, a uh, wolf gray and canterbury blue, which we'll go over in just a moment. A very simplistic, basic bottle. Um, I like the label. It, It's kind of retro. It's it's not like a cheap, cheap sticker. It's kind of laminated, honestly. Um, I think it's nice, though. It's it's pretty simplistic. It has just a good bottle with a good amount of grip on it. The neck is decent. It's pretty well-sized. Well I don't have any issues filling any pins from it. Um, and the bottle's fairly tall. I kind of wish they had narrowed it out, 
narrowed it out just a little bit more. But it's 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 unique enough. It has some stepping here just to add some visual interest. But let's go and take a look at the inks themselves. I have two. Um, as mentioned before, they did a run of Wolf Gray, which is actually a, a pretty nice gray. Um, it's really dark, and it's really, really easy to read back. It's borderlining on black, but it has some really, really cool... Um, it's kind of straight gray color to it. Like there's no, normally when you get a gray ink, um, you're going to have either purple, blue, or um, like reddish undertones. Sometimes you'll have green or something. Um, with this, it's literally gray with gray undertones. Like there's not really any other color here. Um, there's a tiny hint of maybe a purple when you kind of wash it out. But it's it's really really subtle. Um, overall, it's just this is probably my favorite, uh, just straight gray color. Um, I use Diamond Earl Gray more, but this one's this one's really good. The other one is Kara's Customs Canterbury Blue. This is a blue ink. Now, when you're writing with it, it's going to come out a bit more purple initially until it dries, and it certainly has still some of that purple to it. But it's just kind of a straight blue. Um, neither one of these have an amazing amount of shading or anything like that. I really just wanted to try them to be honest. Um, I really I really like Kara's Customs pens, so that was. Uh, just something cool, and again, you may be able to pick some of these up um, if you're interested in, in looking at those. Next, this has got to be my favorite. Uh, if, if you watch this far, you, you get this. I'm going to review this ink in the future anyway, but I wanted to go and show it here. This is my favorite ink packaging of all time. This is Penlux ink. Their Mo lines just the tangerine bottle, but check this out. So it lifts up right here. And when you lift it and open it up, it like accordions out. And all of the corners of this box are decorated as well. Um, they're, it's just, it's really, really pretty. I like this ink box a lot. Like way more than anyone should care about packaging. Um, it's, it's just fantastic. It's a cool little touch. Uh, the ink bottles themselves are basic. But with a little bit of flair. Um, I kind of like the, the trapezoidal shape, and it makes it easier to get ink towards the bottom. Um, they're just standard 50 millimeter, milliliter. Jesus. Um, FYI, these are limited. Um, there were 999 of each color made worldwide, and um, some of those went to the U.S. A lot of them didn't. Um, this one here that I have is 469. I think my purple that I have is a little higher. Um, but yeah, really, really interesting inks. Um, one thing I really like as well, I mentioned the trapezoidal shape earlier. If you look at the sticker, it's actually the reverse. So it, it just has some visual interest. Um, there's some really, really cool lines. And overall, it's just a, it's a really pretty bottle. It's simple, but it's nice. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the colors here. Out of the two, this is my favorite. This is the tangerine. Um, pretty bright orange with some brownish gold um, sheening to it. It's, it's really, really cool. I wrote this with a drier pen, so I apologize for some of the readability. But... I really like this color. Um, it has a bit more red to it than a lot of oranges, um, but I still like it. And also, it, has a, 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 it kind of has a peach-ish undertone. Um, so there's that. And then we have the Pinlux Mo Plum. This, when you write with it, it's just purple. But <laughs> when I did my dip te dip test with it, um, it sheens green as hell. It's crazy. Um, I didn't really get this in any of the writing. However, I haven't used it with a super wet pen, so keep that in mind. But holy crap, it's uh, it's a lot. You can see a bit more of just the straight purple there. It's a it's a nice color. Honestly, both of these together are are really really cool. And again, if you're in the Halloweeny mood, just keep that in mind. Next up, we have KWZ Gummy Berry, which is this here. I love this bottle. <laughs> I love this bottle so much. It's pretty tall. The neck is literally at like almost as wide as the bottle itself. Um, so it's it's super easy. You could fill. I don't know of any pen that you could not fill this this from. You could dip an Aminky Emperor in here if you really wanted to, which is I don't think that's how you fill them. But if you wanted to stick the pen in there, you, you totally could. Um, it, it's pretty basic. I like this color a lot, and uh, the bottle's just it's really nice. I I like it. As far as the color, it's an awesome, awesome purple. I like the name of it too, Gummy Berry. Um, it has a little bit of shading to it, not a ton. 
but just the base color I like it a lot and um, it does have some kind of blackish gray sheening which is again I find it weird when there's like black gray sheening um, but I really really like this color it's just a basic kind of purple but it's it's a lighter purple it's 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 nice I like it next up we have in terms of a mixture of functionality and aesthetics this is my favorite ink bottle. I know I've said that a lot, but I have a lot of different criteria. Um, I mentioned the Pelican Edelstein is the best like desk looking ink. Like if you just set on a desk at work, if you were sitting these on a bookshelf um, somewhere, this would be my favorite. Um, this is the Ackermann. Um, this is the Dutch Masters Collection style bottle. It's so hard to get in frame. There you go. This is massive. This is 120 milli milliliters of ink. And the really cool thing, if you notice when I tilt it down, it's going to be difficult for you to see here. Eh. Um, there's a massive amount of ink up in here, but it's not going down. That's because there's a tiny marble. You can kind of see the bubbles popping here. Um, let's see if it took down just to get a bit more of that bubble action for you. Um, there's a tiny marble right here that sits at the base. And when you tilt the, the, um, ink upside down, the marble falls towards the top here. A lot of ink rushes in and you flip it. And because the marble is, of course, uh, heavier than the ink, the marble drops down and traps the ink in there. You can kind of see the marble right there really cool so just to show you what I mean um, say I wanted to get a pen filled from this you would just kind of tilt it let the ink go in because the marble is kind of receding and then you let it go I mean, you want to do it deeper than this of course but there and then you open it up and you have this is really close to my camera lens I apologize it won't focus up I know that for a fact but you have a, a pretty wide um, neck to fill from it's just it's really simple to fill from I, I like the the bottle a lot and again, it looks kind of like a test vial and like a science lab or something. I don't know. It's really cool. Um, set that over there. And the color that I actually have in it is Ackermann SBRE Brown. Um, this is a really, really cool brown. It's like a caramel orangish brown with a lot of shading to it. My wife hates this color, but I, I love it. It's, it's so good. Really, really like using this ink. I'm going to use it pretty consistently, a lot more than any of the other browns I have, which I don't think I have a ton of browns. But this is really, really good ink. Um, maybe not top five, definitely top ten. It's 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 very unique. Um, I like the bottle, I like the color ink, and it's 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 pretty awesome. These are made in pretty limited batches, so if you see one and you like it, grab it because they're expensive too. I think this is like forty dollars or something um, for this bottle, but it's a lot of ink, so it's kind of a trade off. So as I mentioned earlier, I took a lot of time doing all this. And you can kind of see my, my hands. I, this is just this one day. I've, I've split it up a lot. I forgot one. I'm sorry. I'm scum. It is Kyo no Oto. This is number one. Nurebairo. Really interesting little bottle. Um, I like the, the label. If they had centered it, it would have been nicer. <laughs> um, pretty simplistic bottle, though. It's, it's kind of nice. I like how it's flat on two sides just to give you a little bit of extra grip when you're opening it. Which I'm gonna have to do because I'm going to get this ink swab right here, right now. Um, so this is a black, but you can kind of see some blue undertones. And I've I've heard this ink is really really pretty. I haven't got a chance to use it yet. I I know I'm bad, um, but it's it's like raven's wing black or something like that. So what I'll do is I kind of like take these cards, wrap them up into a circle, because I want to get as much color as I can really. Um, some people swab with a cotton swab. I don't feel like that gives a consistent enough color. You'll notice I do have that on some of my inks, but I, I generally try not to if I can fit one of these cards in the bottle. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this off to the side and let it dry, and we will come back to that in just a bit. Um, that will give you something to look forward to while you're watching the video. Don't skip ahead and, and go straight to when it's dry. Um, that would not be very very kind of you so let's move on for now um, next up we have Nemesign these bottles are really cool um, I think they're 30 mil 35 mil which is again kind of weird I love the labels on them though um, I really really like them a lot another camera skip because I've been recording for an hour now um, I like the labels on these a lot I think they look fantastic they're really really pretty um, this is a shimmering ink so you can kind of see the shimmer down there which we'll show you in just a minute but they're really easy to fill from they're very simple um, they're not a super narrow, but they're narrow enough and they're kind of tapered to where I feel like it won't be too hard to fill from, um, once you, once you do get it down past a certain point. So let's go and take a look at those. 
I have two of the Shimmering Inks, which I'll show you first. That one right there is my favorite of the two. It is Nemesign Blue Snowball Nebula. So if you just look at the ink, you're kind of getting a grayish, green, blue kind of color. But the second you shift it towards the light, it goes like bright silver. It's it's really, really cool. And you'll notice that on the writing too. It's kind of a, a bit darker, a bit more. And then it just like pops. It's it's crazy. I, I like this ink uh, a lot, actually. It's it's really interesting. The other one I have is Nemesign Coal Sack Nebula. Um, this is a blackish purple with a ton of silver shimmer in it. Kind of like the Blue Snowball Nebula, but it's not quite as... Uh, muted which neither one are really muted on so they're both pretty pretty shimmery so if you like shimmering inks maybe check those out the last one um it's a really awesome orange I like this orange a lot it's nemesine solar storm um it's kind of like diamond pumpkin not quite as vibrant with a little more shading so it's kind of a trade-off there um but it's it's really really it's an awesome awesome orange um i use this quite a bit actually next up we have black stone inks um these are fairly new to me I've got these for Christmas. Um, they're some of the ugliest bottles I think I've ever seen. They're, they're plastic. Um, they kind of piss me off, to be honest. If you look right around the cap, there's like that seal, that circle. If you let ink get past that and you close the cap, it will get ink on your hands. The bottles are not great. They're cheap plastic. They're not super, super nice. Um, they're fairly easy to fill from, though, and they're you know pretty lightweight because of the plastic. But the performance of the ink is awesome and I love the colors as well so we have blue gum here that's this ink it smells like mint it's really really cool I um, mean it's kind of a greenish blue uh, a bit more blue than green the lighting's throwing it off just a bit and you do get some um, some reddish sheening which you can see in the writing a little bit as well especially towards the bees um, I use this in my pelican so I really get that sheening effect um, but it's 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 a nice ink it's it's fairly dark but it, the color is really pleasant. You can see a bit more of the kind of base color way. It's not quite as dark as this side. And the other one is red kumzia. I don't know how to pronounce that. I think it's a flower. It smells like flowers. Um, it's it's kind of a, a dusty red color. Um, I, I like it a lot though. It's it's cool. I like the blue gum better, but this this is still a pretty solid ink. And you get some of that kind of goldish sheening down there in the corner, kind of. That you get from some reds. So. Uh, fairly basic colors, but I, I like them a lot, especially the blue gum. Speaking of dusty reds, um, this is Three Oysters. Um, this is a Korean ink brand. I don't have a ton of experience with them, but the ink bottles are unique. They're they're pretty normal looking, um, label askew and everything like that. That really is bothering me. Um, they're ever so slightly tapered, so the ink will come down a bit. But the really cool thing, if you notice, is they're missing a corner. <laughs> and what that what that's for is um, when you get that ink passed down a certain point, you tilt it back to there. And you can fill um, kind of straight down because the neck's pretty wide. Um, so what that will do is that will pull all the ink down to this corner down here. So to give you a little bit more ease of filling. Um, it's kind of a gimmick, to be honest. Uh, at that point, I would just use a syringe. But... If you don't have a syringe or you're at work or something and this is your work ink, you can set it like that. Be very, very careful when this is uncapped doing that. But, you know, you can set it like that and get some ink from it. Um, right now it's borderline full, so if I did that with it open, it would spill everywhere. Um, they do fill this up pretty well. Um, but it's, it's kind of a cool little ink bottle. And as I mentioned, this is like a dusty red color. Um, this is my wife's ink. Again, she likes the kind of muted colors. So this color is perfect for her. It's just a fairly simple red, a very little shading, um, but it's it's not bad. Next up, we have Fountain Pen Revolution. I got this with some FPR pens that I absolutely hate. I've not reviewed them yet because I really don't like filming super negative reviews, but they're, they're trash. Um, and this came with them. It is an okay ink, actually. My wife likes it a lot, especially. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it. But it's not bad. Could certainly be worse. Um, very simplistic, cheap plastic bottle. It's it's not great. I actually like this less, I think, than the Blackstone. I take the, I take my ugly comment about the Blackstone inks back. This is the ugliest bottle that I have. Um, but it's it's not a bad ink. It's a it's just kind of a, a blue black, you know, and it that's what it says in here. It's Fountain Revolution blue black. 
So it's a it's a very simple blue black ink. It came out a little bit lighter than I thought it would. Um, again, I was using a very dry pen to write most of these, so that may be a factor. Um, I'd, I'd look more at this personally than the than other, but it's just kind of a a faint blue black. It's not a bad color by any means, and for it to be a freebie tossed in, eh, I'll take it. Okay, I just grabbed the next batch of inks, and I realized who makes the Karos Customs Ink bottles, and maybe the inks as well. Because I have this here. This is from Papier Plume. Um, this is uh, Kickstarter. They did, um, well, they didn't do it. Pay It Forward did it, but they provided the ink for it. Um, this is called Heart of Gold. I love this color so much. I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, the exact same ink bottle, though, is the Karos Customs. So, you know, um, if you like Papier Plume inks, you might like the Karos Customs one. Um, the label's different on the Karos Customs, but the rest of the bottle's entirely the same. Um, I actually did get two bottles of this because I love this color. I also got a matching pen sleeve um, that I, I guess I can show you. I'll grab it real quick here. Here it is. It is by Rickshaw Bagworks. I love their pen sleeves a lot. Pretty pretty solid stuff. Um, so here's the color. Papier Plume Heart of Gold. It's like a it's a really orange peach color. It's it's fantastic. I really, really like this ink a lot. Um, very little shading to it. Almost no sheen. There's a, a, a little bit that you kind of get, but it's, it's so subtle it doesn't really matter. Um, but the, the base color is just really nice. So if you kind of like peach or salmon, somewhere along that line, add a little bit more orange to it and you get this. It's, it's pretty solid and it performs pretty well. Um, I like using this ink a lot. Next up, kind of along the lines of the Dan Chong, I'm sorry, not Dan Chong, Three Oysters bottles that we looked at. Um, this is Waterman. Um, I think these bottles will look better. I like the shape of them. Um, they're just more visually interesting. Um, the caps are kind of boring, but, you know. And again, how hard is it to center a label? I didn't notice this until I'm sitting here looking at all the, these inks together. None of them have good label centering. Um, but like the Dan Shong, what it does is when you, your ink gets low, you can tilt it on its side, on either side. I think this is more practical than the Dan Shong um, because it's a larger surface that it's sitting on. It's uh, actually pretty large, um, so it's a bit more stable, and you can spin it. <laughs> no, but um, you, it kind of allows you to get down in like the very back corner um, when this cap is opened. And pretty wide neck on these. I actually like these bottles a lot. The label doesn't really do it for me, but the things themselves are pretty good, along with the bottles. So we have two of them. We have Waterman Harmonious Green. Um, it's it's a pretty pale green, honestly. It does have some, sh some shading to it, but it's it's a lighter green. It it just performs pretty well. It's, it's uh, again, one of my more basic inks. I'm not a huge fan of. But, however, I do like Waterman Tender Purple a lot. <laughs> This is a really, really cool purple. It's super vibrant. I really wasn't expecting this when I got the ink um, for it to be this appealing to me, but I, I like this one a lot. There's a little bit of sheening. I'm um, kind of like a, a goldish brown color um, with maybe some green undertones um, towards the bottom, but you don't really get that in the writing. You mostly get a straightforward purple with a good amount of shading to it. Next up, we have sailor ink let me get it out of the box here sorry this is the last few so i just grabbed what i could so similar to the bung box bottle or exactly like the bung box bottle um same thing basically you know well not basically is the same thing with a different label um this though is the sailor gentle ink this is the fuji musume really like this color it's kind of like a lavender purple um it's it's lighter it's still pretty easy to read back honestly and has a ton of shading like literally a ton of shading. It's it's a really, really cool ink. These Sailor inks are a little dry, so I don't use it a bunch, but it's it's a very pleasant color to look at. It almost has like a, a at least this little part here looks kind of like that like galaxy. I don't know. It's almost like there's there's not any shimmer to it, but if you look at the camera it kinda of looks like there is. Just because of the little the lighter patches sparkle throughout it. Um so it's it's interesting. Um I really like the color of it. It's it's pretty unique too. I don't have any other colors that are quite like this. While we're waiting for that other Kyo no Oto ink to dry, I have one more here. I'll just go ahead and pull out the bottle or the box as well because this I like this box. Um, this is Colorverse ink. These are very expensive, in my opinion. 
I picked this up at the Atlanta Pincher, though. Um, this is Schrodinger and Cat. So, one of these bottles is mislabeled. Don't let that throw you off. Um, I confirmed it is the color. You get a ton of stuff with these inks. I, I gotta say, for them to be expensive as they are, it's almost justified. So, you get some cloths, like napkins almost, to wipe your um, inks off. You get a ton of stickers. You get um, these little pen stands with it. You get a little booklet. And then you get the ink. Um, so, you kind of lift this out of here, if I can get it. I'm struggling here. I generally just lift the bottle up and go from there. So, I'll just do that. So, yeah. You get two bottles with this. I'll pull up the tinier bottle here as well. And I'll get all this packaging up out of the way. I just want to show you all the box there. And all this stuff, I'll put that up as well. So, what you do is you get a standard Colorverse bottle, which are the most unique looking bottles I've ever seen in my life. Um, they're really cool. Kind of like the um, the Ackermann bottles. I think these would look really cool on like a, a bookshelf. Um, the labels are pretty centered, which would be hard not to because it's kind of rounded off and depressed. Kind of like me. Um, so you have this little tail thing sticking off. And it's, I don't know, it's just a really cool look. Um, they're pretty easy to fill from. They're not super tall. I almost want to forgive it, though, just because it's so weird. Um, but yeah, they're, they're pretty easy to fill from, pretty consistent inks. The Schrodinger, personally, is my favorite out of the two. But we'll talk about that in just a minute. Now, this is Cat. It is not labeled as Cat, but it is Cat. I've confirmed with Vanessa who I bought it from. It's just a mistake on Colorverse's part. It's it's 100% the, the cat color. Um, again, confirm that with them. This is my favorite ink bottle, though. Not in terms of practicality or any sort of usage, because I don't think you could really use it properly. But it's so pretty. Look at it. It's so little. Um, just for size comparisons. Um, or, you know, if you happen to have a, a Sailor ink. Um, it's so little. These are 15 mil bottles. They look the exact same, though. Um, the tiniest neck you've ever seen in your entire life. Look how little it is. It's like my, my finger couldn't fit in here. It's, it's crazy. But they're really, really cute little inks. Last two. Um, it's not quite dry, but you're going to get the gist of it. Kyo no Oto no Ribeiro. Um, Again, kind of a simplistic bottle. Pretty basic looking thing, but it's not bad. My camera's about to die, so I'm trying to hurry up. Um, This is the color here. So it's... Got a lot of black with some like navy blue in there. It's kind of kind of cool actually. Um, there will of course be a right example in the review I do of it, but I just want to go and show you here. And this is the other one I have. This is Hisoku, which is a really kind of grayish blue, a little bit of green undertone to it. It's pretty cool though. I like it a lot. Anyway, that is it for the ink collection. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I will never be doing this again. I can promise you that. Um, but I hope you all enjoyed it. I have a lot of inks, a lot more than I thought I did, and a lot more than any normal human needs. But I do have them. So, um, if you can keep it short, or if you really like typing, let me know what you have in your ink collection. I'd, I'd love to have some recommendations of stuff that I can spend more money on. Um, but yeah, thanks for um, having me do this, guys. It was a lot of work, but it's pretty fun. Um, and I'm going to go pick up all these ink balls now because they're everywhere. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.